This video will show you some demonstrations of Easy Chooser, a tool developed at Verizon Laboratories to help consumers make choices uh, using the attributes of the choice set. You're looking now at a home page of a site on our intranet where users can upload and import data sets and make use of the tool. Uh, we'll start by looking at some examples and within those examples we'll try and give you first an idea of how a user might make use of this tool to make a decision. So let's presume that we're making a choice regarding uh, picking a university. What I could do on the web is look at a table like this. This is a table that shows lots of good data about universities in the United States, the top 50 in this case, and there's lots of information but it's quite difficult to make sense of information in that form. So let's go back and take a look at the Easy Chooser version of that same information. First you'll notice that each row tell has a different attribute. So here is overall rank and by looking through the table like this I can sort of see I can browse it. So I can see here actually that Dartmouth is ranked first among these top 50 here. And if I'm making a decision, I'm going to take a look and see what information is here to see what might matter to me. Here, for example, is an attribute that might matter to me personally, the percent of classes under 20. So a user might make a selection such as this to say, let's uh, take a look at only those universities here that have 70% or above of classes under 20. And I've narrowed my selection set down to 9 here. And now, by looking at where these rectangles fall on other attributes, I can, I can see uh, how that set uh, ranks with respect to these other attributes. So here, for example, I can notice that this set also has a pretty high, accept, uh, rather low acceptance rate, um, 10 to 20 percent which may be a little stiff for my decision. So I can also relax that first restriction and go back and see what happens if I uh, look at those that rank in 60% or above with small class size. And I can see that um, my selectivity and uh, acceptance rate has also relaxed. So I can make further restrictions here. For example, I could say let's look at only those universities with an acceptance rate of 40 percent or greater with small class sizes and I get a set of seven now. Now for these seven I'm also able to mark them. For instance let's take a look at Vanderbilt. I'm going to click here mark Vanderbilt in red and now go back and look and see how Vanderbilt falls within this multi-dimensional context and let's see it pretty much in the middle of most of the rankings. I can just look at that with a real quick glance. I'm able to actually select up to three and color them. So here I'm looking at how Vanderbilt compares to Brandeis across all these different criteria. So with these basic methods I could narrow my set down, explore the data, and uh, go on from there. Let's take a closer look at the actual techniques we used. And to do that I'm going to go to another data set. This happens to be the data set that is deployed on superpages.com which has uh, new car data. I'm going to pick a set of cars called subcompacts and it's going to load in data about, uh, about this set. We're going out onto the internet now so uh, we may have to wait for a moment for the data to load. Here it is. So one of the things I did in that previous exercise was that I um, swept my mouse along a row of icons and I was able to explore um, the, let's say, the extremes, for instance, of that value. So here, for instance, I'm able to see which Chevrolet, are, uh, for Chevrolet models are actually in this set of subcompacts, and there are three of them. I was also able to mark an item so, for example, this Chevrolet Cavalier, I could mark it with a color and then quickly see how that particular item uh, ranked with respect to many different attributes across a larger context. 
both these methods make use of the notion of item vectors uh, that we discuss in the paper. Another set of interactions had to do with value selection. So for example, here I might choose three uh, values such as consumer guide rating here, best recommended and budget by. And then I might also choose a price range. Uh, let's say I go from 12000 to $16,000. So now I've done a dynamic query where I've restricted my set just to the those that match those uh, values. Note also what happened to the uh, icons above the bars. You can see in some cases the icons are, not, are now gone, which indicates that those items uh, have been eliminated from the set. So if I actually clicked a value where there was no icon, I would, I would get no matches. There are also some icons that are drawn but not filled. Uh, this is an indication that there are more, if, if I select those values, that combines them with logical or and actually adds to my set. So in this way, this is a help to users uh, to guide their queries and that by also by viewing these icons across the dimensions, they can explore the effect of making restrictions and how those restrictions uh, would react with other attributes. So it allows users to explore the information. Let me go back to one uh, last example to discuss some issues with regard to the scale of uh, Easy Chooser. Here I'm going to show you an example of um, images. Uh, in this case, uh, the tool scans uh, the disk and extracts uh, data about all the images on a file system. So here we're looking at actually um, 546 items in this space. Um, now as I restrict my set by selecting and filtering, Notice what happens to the uh, display. Now you can see that the rectangles are, are visible, whereas before there were simply uh, what looked like solid lines. As the set gets smaller, because they're rectangles or perhaps icons drawn here, I'm able to make selections and browse individual items, uh, which makes sense to my task. At the higher uh, scales, I'm able to deal with attribute information to restrict further and explore relationships. Now besides what happens with drawing of the items, notice what happens uh, with the actual value bars as I filter. So here what started out as a choice of ranges between 0 and 500k, 500 to a megabyte and so forth, now I'm down to the, to the hundreds of uh, kilobytes in my selections. And as I go further, I recalculate yet again the set of value bins that are relevant to that set size. And in this way, the tool is able to scale across different set sizes in order to make labeling and selection easier for users. So we hope we've given you an idea of, of Easy Chooser and the techniques it uses for supporting tasks involving uh, object selection based on attributes. Uh, the main techniques we use have to do with uh, bar grams, which are the visualization of the attribute information and item vectors which let information be painted regarding specific items. Thank you.